Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and today we are taking a look at six Legion starters. It is that time of the Path of Exile life cycle where uh, there is nothing but excitement and hype and anticipation as we all simply drip and sweat with excitement, with uh, hype, with every ounce of our beings waiting for the moment when the countdown timer reaches zero and we all can rush in hopefully not stuck at over 9,000 position in queue to actually play path of exile legion so without any further ado you can go ahead and hit like subscribe and ding the bell if you like these sorts of discussions and would like to be a part of more of them I have teased several of these builds out on our Discord channel, which of course the link is posted down below in the video description. All of the build guides that we are going to be taking a look at here today will also have their links for either their forum post or their path of building paste bin down below in the video description. And as always, there are convenient timestamps placed directly above my slightly balding forehead for your convenience. And those are hot linked for you down below in the video description as well so i couldn't i i could not get this list down to just six so it says six it's six builds with two honorable mentions so if that makes you hate this discussion and you just can't stand it i didn't want to name it eight legion starters i six is already pushing it anyway let's jump right in so the first one or rather the sixth one depending on however you want to count it is uh bleed gladiator i am very excited to play this those of you who do play hardcore and those of you who maybe are considering playing hardcore during legion league i wanted to start off with something that was relatively safe relatively easy to farm with in res relatively quick uh to get geared up very very soon during a league start this particular gladiator bleed version focuses on using either double strike or lacerate and then focuses in on dual wielding dream feathers in order to stack added attack damage uh, based on your evasion rating so it's a gladiator which means it gets to stack a whole bunch of block chance it's also going to be stacking a whole bunch of evasion rating and then of course it is going to be using bleed as its primary offensive mechanism but also kind of double dipping with offensive and me defensive mechanics uh, between evasion and attack damage because of the dream feathers so this is a great example of a build that is reliant on uniques but at least at the moment these uniques are not necessarily projected to be uh highly rare or highly valuable so you should be able to get your hands on these those of you that are saying iron you know what i'm not playing hardcore during legion that's fine i'm not playing hardcore during legion either nonetheless bleed gladiator is a great way to go if you want something that's consistent maybe something that can farm you lab during the first couple of days of the league whether that's farming cruel merciless or uber lab it doesn't matter what it is having something that is capable of carrying other characters other guildies or simply other people as a service is a wonderful way to get your of course bank of exile started and a gladiator can do that very very well regardless of whether you are playing hardcore or softcore the lab is always hardcore in that regard that you'll have to reattempt it so this was a great great build to start out with the passive tree looks something like this according to the new passive tree which one of the things that i really like about the new duelist passive tree like there, there's everything down there first off the bottom half of the tree there's just everything down there but it really allows for a lot of flexibility and it, it really always has um but because attacks have gotten buffed maybe it feels like it's more flexible it allows for a lot of flexibility in terms of the weapons that you want to use and the damage sources that you'd like to emphasize for your build. So let's say, for instance, you're starting out, you're leveling, and you can't get your hands on a Dream Feather, or maybe you're playing in Solo Cell Found and you can't get your hands on a Dream Feather because it didn't drop for you. That's totally fine. Maybe you can swap over to Axes if uh, Axes have dropped for you. Maybe you can swap over to a Two-Hander if a Two-Hander has swapped for you. So I really, really like how that bottom half of the tree looks for this particular Bleed Gladiator, and I think it'll work out very very well for anybody that wants to use it as a league starter our fifth build that's coming in here that i'm excited to play is a cyclone raider yes cyclone is going to dominate the meta i am not going to be surprised if at all if in 10 to 14 days we do a league economic update and sure enough the poe <laughs> meta is just revolving revolving ah there's a pun anyway revolving around cyclone uh it would not 
it would not surprise me at all if upwards of 60 to 70 percent of the league were playing this yes i know that's like a bold thing like winter orb everybody said was just ridiculous and everybody was playing it and it was at 40 percent of the league i would not be shocked to see upwards of 60 to 70 percent of the league in some way shape or form playing cyclone even if it's just using cyclone as a movement skill which cyclone is going to be great as of course a uh, triggering skill for either cast on crit or cast while channeling but this particular version playing cyclone on a raider is very exciting to me i love uh the onslaught buffs that are available for a cyclone and reloads of course takes advantage of that with this particular build with the buffed on version of of onslaught but i've also been really appreciative as well this particular build allows for flexibility to build around frenzy charges as needs be so this is the uh, uh path of building particular tree that this particular build is using but there's a couple of different options that are out there now for frenzy users he's got vol pact on here which is that's fine i think i'm probably going to use it maybe we'll we'll see what the the damage numbers are in terms of my life regen on this particular build and the itemization that i choose to go but this particular build if you go raider and you really want to invest into a bunch of frenzy charges because there is now a node on the passive tree that allows you to increase your minimum number of frenzy charges that to me is very very appealing because oftentimes it can be a pain in the butt getting your frenzy charges going whether that's starting a map or whether that is starting a boss encounter and so just having plus one minimum frenzy charges uh which was an incredibly powerful synthesis craft to have on items now that's available in the passive tree and so that's something that i'm excited to play around with whether or not uh it's this specific version uh or whether or not i'm going to make some tweaks to the tree i'm certainly going to follow this particular version of the tree to start out with and then we'll see how it goes for here with this purely physical cyclone based raider Coming in at number four is the Scourge Arrow Trickster. I've never played a Scourge Arrow uh, character before. And so those of you that are looking at all of these melee changes and saying, hey, Iron, these are great, but what about us bow users? Well, I'm with you. I actually, whenever I'm playing softcore, I typically build at least one Magic Find character per league. Usually that's a Tornado Shot uh, Deadeye or a Tornado Shot Pathfinder. Those are typically the two Magic Find builds that I play or the two Magic Find Ascendancies that I play. But this particular opportunity to play Trickster, which is still incredibly strong. Yes, it got tweaked. Yes, it got a little bit of a nerf here in 3.7. Still going to be incredibly strong. ES, Energy Shield builds, are just getting stomped on left and right. People are, are, are downplaying the ability of ES, and rightly so. In comparison with, with Synthesis, Chaos Inoculation builds and, and just Energy Shield builds and Hybrid builds in general are going to take a hit in terms of their numbers from Synthesis League. And that's that's fine that doesn't mean that energy shield is unplayable and so what i'm excited to do is to try out this ci trickster which will be very very tanky uh but then also will have the ability to have that mirage archer going off over my head as i am running around maps and blowing things up left and right i really like that he scales cold damage on this particular scourge arrow build and so there's all of those wonderful opportunities for shadow shatter effects this is what the passive tree looks like for this particular scourge arrow trickster i'm probably going to make some changes again down towards that bottom side bottom right side of the tree if there's any way for me to stretch this build to go all the way down to the bottom and grab that plus one minimum frenzy charges i probably will uh but that's just me being greedy right now and not actually knowing hey what's the sort of gear that's going to drop for me what's my currency going to look like uh how greedy should i play it with frenzy charges i just think that frenzy charges this league are going to be incredibly incredibly powerful and because we've got easy access to them um, uh, through the passive tree like might as well take advantage of it while we have that opportunity to do so so i'm very very excited to play around with this tree and see exactly what we can do with it how we can min max the hell out of the scourge arrow trickster our third build coming in at number three is a hero font so those of you that are going oh well where are the the melee builds they're coming back they're coming back we started off with a few of them so I've already played Armageddon Brand uh, in the past on an Elementalist, and it was incredibly powerful. It was one of the builds that I used to take down Shaper that league. And it got a little bit of a nerf, and then I went back to playing it again that, that very next league, and I was like, this is still a fantastic skill. This is great. Like, sure, it got some nerfs and some tweaks, but the previous league I had killed Shaper on a like a four or 5,000 life pool elementalist witch on a five link i mean it was just stupid how strong it was so i was like oh they nerfed it so now i need a six link okay that's fine uh now of course there are different players of different mechanical skill 
I am not a mechanically skilled player in any way, shape, or form. And so for me to go in and kill Shaper on a five link is like, wow, that's amazing. Not because of my skill, but because of what the skill in the game can do. And so I've always been impressed with Armageddon Brand. I know, I know for a fact, right, how many players have loved using Storm Brand and how it has been the preferable brand out of the two for mapping as well as for racing and for the speed at which it clears. I just feel like Armageddon Brand scales up really, really well. And it's really, really cheap. Uh, to get scaled up, which is really nice. While everybody is all focused on lightning brands or storm brands and lightning damage, uh, it was really, really cheap for me to get uh, good gear for Armageddon brand. And so I'm excited because I don't have a hero font yet in standard. My hardcore hero font Draconis was supposed to be that guy. And I decided to go Inquisitor <laughs> during Synthesis League rather than hero font because of the changes to the Inquisitor tree. And I thought this is way better than hero font. Why would I why would I go here a font? Anyway, so I'm going to do my best to actually buckle down at some point during Legion League and play out an Armageddon brand hero font, unless something else shows up for me in the hero font skill tree, which there's a couple other things that may actually show up for me in their, uh, in their toolkit, as it were, for me to try out a hero font. The tree should look relatively familiar for any of you who have played a hero font in the past. For any of you that have played either a totem user or a brand user, of course, you want to go all the way up to the very top, 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 top portion of the tree and get that big fire wheel for damage. And then, of course, you also want to get every single little piece of brand quality of life that you can on the tree, which speaking of life, we're going to drop all the way down to the bottom and grab every single last wheel, every single last 5% wheel on that Scion life nodes, uh, because this is a life build and i think the meta while i just said hey energy shield is going to be fine for the trickster the meta is definitely going to shift back to life uh, after synthesis's massive explosion of energy shield crafting i think most builds especially with all of the melee changes most builds are going to be bottom half of the tree and not many people are going to want to take the passive journey all the way up to grab a bunch of ES nodes in the witch tree as well as near the shadow and the Templar. Uh, that's just not going to happen. Most folks are going to be going life in some form. And so for this particular hero font, I think I'm going to follow the meta in that regard for Legion League to go life based on this hero font rather than going uh, ES or even hybrid. All right, the number two build that I am stoked to play at some point and would love to hear from some of you all if you've played this is the Stunning Slayer. Okay, so I have built this guy in standard multiple times. I love uh, that Bright Waha has shown off this build multiple times. He keeps this thing updated every single league. He changes it, he tweaks it, he makes notes to it. Uh, I wanna say it was like 3-3 three, three or 3-4. Three, He's probably got notes on his build page uh, for exactly what killed the Stunning build on shaper but there was a there was a patch that essentially killed stunning shaper uh, and stunning all of the bosses throughout the entirety of the game and it is back his quote here on uh, his particular build guide is that this is the golden era for this build has arrived <laughs> great quote right like how good must that feel to to build a character and to theory craft something in path of exile and to see the patch notes and to just keep reading and just like you're like the you're like the wwe meme you're just like sitting back oh 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 like it's just great right um and so every single change that is going on in 3.7 is going to essentially buff this build. Slayer got buffed, stunning, and and tons of added flat damage on a bunch of different skill gems, uh, along with support gems as well as active gems, and heavy strike being stronger than ever as a big single target heavy hitting skill, the big single target heavy hitting skill. Uh, and then of course, taking advantage of the Tidebreaker uh, massive, massive mace, which is great. If you ever want to play this build and just walk into boss rooms and boss encounters and not let the boss do anything, this is the build for you. If you have been frustrated by mechanics or you have at any point in time just wanted to go in and bully a particular boss, uh, the Hillock boss, for whatever reason, is the boss that I have decided is my arch and nemesis uh, in a lot of Path of Exile. It's all oftentimes go into maps that have the Hillock boss uh, with the uh, Shaper stunning build. And uh, I'll just run around and, and find the boss and then stun him a bunch because I think it's fun. I think Hillock is a terrible person in game. In, I'm not saying he's poorly designed. He's really greatly designed because I really hate the guy. He's an absolutely, uh, you know, fiend and a terror on everything that is, uh, you know, around Lion Eyes Watch. And so, of course, let's kill that guy as often as we can and let's stun the hell out of him so that way he never gets to retaliate or pull that stupid 
Ancient Sword out of his chest. So this is the build if you've got a particular vendetta against a particular boss to take them down. The stunning Slayer Tree looks something like this. Of course, as you are building this particular build, it is a lot more narrow in terms of its scope and what it's needed to actually make it tick than all of the other builds that I've mentioned thus far in this particular discussion. This build has got some very particular uniques that you'll need to farm. It's got some very particular nodes as well as jewels in order to increase your effectiveness when you're going in to kill certain bosses. Yes, this build can stun Shaper. It is possible to stun Shaper. There are videos of the build uh, creator actually stunning shaper so it's possible to do of course 3.7 isn't out yet so nobody's made that happen yet for 3.7 but nonetheless the proof of concept is there the resume is there and this build if i can be punny for a minute is going to be absolutely stunning during path of exile legion league and i'm stoked to play it all right, before we get to the number one build, here's the two honorable mentions uh, here. So the two honorable mentions are, first off, how to smash heads. And this is this really is an extremely detailed guide about how facebreaker gloves are to be used and taken advantage of. It's really, really new player friendly. So if you've never played Melee, right? If you've never played Melee in Path of Exile, or maybe if you've just dabbled in it, remember I came into Path of Exile playing mostly Necromancers and Summoners. That was what I played for years. In, in Path of Exile. And then I transitioned over to playing one particular melee build, which we'll get to in a minute. But anyway, face breakers are a great way to get into playing melee. It's very, very learner friendly and that you learn a lot of the mechanics that you're interacting with and the particular stats that you are looking for on the particular build. And you can kind of see, if you're unfamiliar with the new passive tree, I've heard a couple of people on our Discord as well as have emailed me. I know that sounds weird. Who emails somebody on YouTube? But a couple of folks have even emailed over the last couple of days that have said, hey, how does this whole bottom half of the passive tree work? And how do we do this? And I had one guy on Discord just say, look, I don't even... <laughs> I don't even want to read on all of this. Just somebody explain it to me. Somebody explain all these changes going on on the passive tree. So if you're at that point, if you're at a point where you're just kind of overwhelmed and you're wondering, hey, I'd like something that's really straightforward and that's really going to walk me through and educate me about how to make good decisions while playing Melee, the How to Smash Heads guide is very, very helpful for that as an introduction playing through a Facebreaker build. Now, that being said, I've got to have a disclaimer here. I think face breakers are probably going to be pretty popular this this league. If 60 to 70% of the league are playing melee, maybe 80% of the league are going to be playing melee in some shape or form. It means that a lot of people are going to want to level using face breakers. So they have the potential for very highly well-rolled face breakers to be very expensive. There's the potential for that. Don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not guaranteeing that if you find a face breakers, you just got rich. But what I am saying is, is if they're well rolled, they're going to be relatively valuable in comparison with poorly rolled face breakers, which may be more common, uh, but still rather build defining, especially while you're leveling, since so many folks who play melee can level with face breakers relatively quickly. The second honorable mention here is the Bladestorm Berserker. And I include this because this is a proof of concept build. This is something that I'd like to play. And I know that there's a lot of other players that would like to play this build. This is interacting with the new Blood and Sand Stance stuff. And I'm very, very excited to see what Bladestorm does. It sounds a lot to me um, like Berserker uh, and the whole Whirlwind scenario, the Barbarian uh, in uh, Diablo 3, which I enjoyed that play style. I farmed the heck out of it back when I played Diablo 3 where you were leaving a bunch of tornadoes down behind you and you just were a tornado of death uh, as you were running around. I think that was a very, very fun play style that hasn't necessarily translated into Path of Exile, which is fine. Path of Exile, way better game. Absolutely better game. I don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that it's not a superior game. I'm simply saying that one build has not necessarily come over into Path of Exile. And I see that the Blade Storm skill is maybe an opportunity to try to scale up those particular little cyclones that you leave behind, whether or not they blind folks in Sand Stance or whether they make folks bleed in Blood Stance. Uh, I think it's very, very exciting. The other exciting part about this is that you can tweak this particular build into being a uh, lacerate build, which I think would be great uh, when I'm thinking about attack speed builds, I'm thinking about playing a Berserker and I'm thinking about building up my Rage Bar and I'm thinking about building up as much attack speed as possible and overlapping as many attacks as I can with Lacerate. And I'm very, very excited to see how that Lacerate skill is going to interact and how it's going to look and feel with the amount of attack speed that is going to be available in Path of Exile Legion League. So I'm very, very stoked to try out all of the different iterations that are going to come with this Bladestorm, Bladestorm Berserker build. 
Okay, here's the number one bill. The big, the big hype train that none of you are hyped for. I know this, okay? I don't want to hear anybody down in the comments claiming that they were hyped for this, okay? I have combed the forums. I've combed Reddit. I've combed various different uh, Discord users that have been close friends of mine and gone, hey, have you heard anybody talking about Earthquake? Hey, have you? Is, is there any other mentions of Earthquake in the last week on the forums, in the Marauder section, in the in the uh, Duelist section? I mean, are there any Raider, like uh, the Ranger, like Earthquake builds that are going up? Are there any Scion Earthquake builds that are going up? Come on, guys, like Earthquake Juggernaut, EQ Juggernaut, like the freaking archetype for melee big dudes slam the ground everything dies and explodes this thing is well for me it's like the most exciting thing that could happen to melee is a buff to eq juggernaut for some of you you're going to be scratching your head and saying what's earthquake i don't even know that that skill exists <laughs> and that's totally fine for some of you you're going to be scratching your head going iron dude you need to go get some sleep or something. You've been staring at Path of Building too long. Like, what the heck, man? Why are you excited for Earthquake? Maybe I'm just nostalgic. Maybe it's because Earthquake was like one of the most consistent uh, skills that I used back when I was playing hardcore. And I swapped over from playing a bunch of Necromancers and Summoners. Uh, and I started to learn how to play Melee. Earthquake was like the thing uh, for me to play in hardcore. And so it was it was the thing that got me over the hump, killing a bunch of different bosses in hardcore uh, and got me into maps. It was my first hardcore Melee uh, mapping build was an Earthquake Juggernaut. And I am stoked to see exactly what this is going to look like. Now, I'm going to give a shout out to Cowpimp here because he has done his best over the last several leagues to update this. Hopefully he's going to continue updating it. And I hope that there's a couple other people out in the community that enjoy Earthquake. Wave and say hello. <laughs> if you're alive still, Earthquake players, where are you at? Anyway, I'm stoked to play Earthquake. So I'm going to play around with a couple of different uh, trees. I have been playing around with a couple of different passive trees. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it EQ Jug um, or whether or not I'm going to go eq slayer or whether or not i'm going to go eq berserker or whether or not uh i'm going to go i i don't even know there's so many options i might even go eq scion probably not as my league starter that'll probably be once i've got some currency going but i'm just excited to play earthquake i think that based on all of the changes that are happening for melee if slower bigger hits are going to be better during Le legion league which we know for a fact they are in many ways that's good news for earthquake that's good news because there's a threshold point where you want to get with your attack speed for Earthquake where it's not too fast and it's not too slow. Uh, and so a big heavy hit that has just the right amount of attack speed is exceptional for Earthquake. It's a very, very defensive build that can take you very far on the Atlas. You can go in um, and start bossing with it. You can swap your gems out relatively easily with an Earthquake build if you really need to up your single target damage and get away from the AoE clear. But there is nothing that I have played. It, it's, it comes close. It comes close when I'm playing a Lacerate build. But there is nothing that has come and replicated the exact feeling of playing an EQ Juggernaut where you are leap slamming from pack to pack to pack, slamming your mace, your axe, or whatever it is, down onto the ground, and then leap slamming away without anything being dead. Nothing is dead at that point. You leap slam into a pack, you, 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 you earthquake, nothing is dead, and then as you jump away... There's just this explosion in the background of death. I don't know. I don't even like Michael Bay films, but I don't know if it's like a Michael Bay-esque <laughs> sort of attraction where you're just like, you're leaping away from the path of the destruction that you've carved out in the world of Rayclass. But I love that. Like that's, there's something very visceral about that. I don't know why. I can't necessarily tangibly put that out there for you. But for me, there is something emotionally very satisfying to jumping into a pack, none of them being dead, and me just walking away. I, I guess it's the same thing, and maybe some of you out there play sports. Maybe if you, some of you don't. I guess maybe it, it harkens back to when I used to play basketball as a kid, and you'd, you'd shoot a, a long shot. And then you just kind of like start walking away knowing that it was going in. There's just something incredibly cool. It's like, it's like, it's like super hot, right? It's like soup of hot fire. It's just, it, it's amazing. That is the feeling that I get when I jump into a pack, I earthquake, and then I jump away. I, there, I don't think there's a better feeling, uh, at least in terms of playing a build in Path of Exile than that. So that is what I am hyped for, is Earthquake Juggernaut. This is a, 
Uh, kind of a, a, a skill tree. I'm probably going to tweak this. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to tweak this. I can already see some things that I'm going to tweak. Anyway, this is what I'm excited to play around with because Earthquake Juggernaut doesn't even have to be Juggernaut. Just Earthquake is a very, very diverse skill that you can play with a lot of different weapons. And so you're not necessarily gear dependent. You can league start with it or you can scale it up with a lot of investment. You can just go and stack as many Abyss Jewels as you want onto this thing and really scale the hell out of the damage if you'd like to do that and just keep keep climbing on the Atlas with it. So I'm very, very excited to try out Earthquake in this new Path of Exile Legion League in 3.7 and just see how it feels. Because I think... If it's anywhere near good, I'm probably going to play the hell out of it. And I'm stoked for that. But that's enough about me. That was six builds, really eight builds, but six builds that I'm excited to play during Path of Exile Legion League. What about you? What are you going to be league starting with during Legion League? Is there a particular build that's maybe tried and true that you've used in the past, whether that's something in 3.6 or 3.5 that you know, hey, this is a safe league starter. Is there a build maybe that you're looking at and you're going, you know what, that gem got tweaked or, oh, here's a new gem. And so I'm going to build an entire build around it. What is it that you're going to start your Legion League with? And then, of course, the second question, what builds are you most looking forward to trying out during Legion League? Unfortunately, I cannot league start eight different builds. So I'm going to have to choose one of these to league start. And who knows, maybe I'm going to league start none of them, but I'm definitely going to be playing pretty much all of these builds at some point throughout Legion League because I am stoked, stoked as I can be to play Legion League. I think this is going to be an exceptional league where there's lots of replayability. And those of you who are altaholics out there who like to level lots of characters and you get to like around 75, 80, and then you level a new character, this is going to be a perfect league for that, I think, because there are so many different melee quality of life uh, builds that are going to be available out there to you depending on your ascendancy. So what builds are you most looking forward to trying out during Legion League? The list goes on and on. I really tried to pare this down for you guys. I, there's like another 100, 100 builds that I would love to feature in this particular build video. But, you know, maybe later on. Maybe later. Maybe we'll do another one of these, you know, in a few weeks once I've had time to actually play some of these builds and uh, leap slam Earthquake away from a pack. Whoa! You know, it's so awesome. Anyway. All that being said, I look forward to the discussion that we have down below in the comments, and I appreciate any feedback that y'all have got for us, and I hope that Path of Exile 3.7 Legion League is the league where a Mirror of Calandra drops for you. Maybe it'll drop for you right after you leap slam into a pack. How about that? That'd be pretty sick. Yes, patrons, yes, good patrons. They're so kind and supportive. I can't believe you watched that thing. That was a good job. You did it. You got through the whole uh, video. Yay.